Welcome to a presentation on Achilles tendon rupture. So the objectives of this presentation today are understanding of the Achilles tendon function and anatomy, symptoms and presentation of Achilles tendon rupture, when to treat conservatively or surgically, and rehabilitation following the surgery. So to start off with the anatomy, the um, calcaneal tendon, or as more commonly known, the Achilles tendon, is the thickest and strongest tendon in the human body. It can withstand a stress equivalent of 10 tonnes, or seven times the body weight. And as the fibres pass down, they spiral through 90 degrees, which explains the elasticity of the tendon. The Achilles tendon does not have a true synovial sheath, but instead has a paratendon, and the paratendon is a connective tissue sheath that surrounds the entire tendon and is able to stretch two to three centimetres with movement, which allows a maximal glide in action. The tendon itself is approximately 15 centimetres in length, from the blend with the gastrocnemius, soleus and plantaris, to the insertion to the calcaneus. There are three muscles that insert into the Achilles tendon, the first one being the biggest calf muscle, the gastrocnemius. So the shape of the calf is mainly due to the two bellies of gastrocnemius, and they attach to the medial and lateral condyles of the femur and insert distally to the posterior surface of the Achilles tendon and fuse also with the soleus muscle. The tendon becomes more rounded and narrows, becoming three fingers or four centimetres thick superior to the insertion on the calcaneus, which is the middle part of the posterior surface. The nerve supply is from the tibial nerve, S1 and S2, for motor function, and the area of the skin for sensation is from roots L4, 5 and S2. The second main muscle of the calf is the soleus, and this sits deep to gastrocnemius, wider in the middle part and narrower at the base. It arises from the soleal line on the posterior surface of the tibia and the posterior surface of the upper third of the fibula. It attaches to the deep surface of the Achilles tendon, but importantly they don't blend until further down, which enables the muscles to act independently. The nerve supplies from the two branches of the tibial nerve again, so S1 and S2, and sensation over the skin is supplied by S2. The plantaris, which is a long slender muscle, um, and it starts superior at the supracondyle ridge and the popliteal surface of the femur. The tendon passes between gastrocnemius and soleus and can insert into the medial part of the Achilles tendon or directly into the calcaneus on the medial side. The nerve supply is from the tibial nerve and again S1 and S2. So the function of the gastrocnemius, this muscle is the main propulsive force when walking and as gastrocnemius crosses two joints it can't exert its full power when the knee is flexed and vice versa. When you consider the power used to jump it must be one of the most powerful muscles in the body. The soleus acts as a postural muscle so it does help the gastrocnemius plant flex the ankle um, and it also helps prevent the body fall forwards due to where it inserts. The contraction of the muscle during standing aids with venous return as the deep and superficial venous system pass through this muscle. The plantaris is the weakest muscle of the three muscles of the calf and it aids little with plantar flexion. Um, when it is torn it can be referred to as tennis leg and if ruptured um, usually has to be surgically removed. For palpation, the two large muscle bellies of the gastrocnemius can be felt on the upper surface of the calf and they can easily be seen when you go up on tiptoes. Just halfway down the calf, you can feel the insertion of the Achilles tendon. Um, soleus is deeper but can be seen when on tiptoes inferior and lateral to the lateral head of gastrocnemius. And the Achilles tendon can be felt narrowing and rounding at the level of the ankle joint and it expands slightly before it inserts into the calcaneus. So how common is Achilles tendon rupture? Its prevalence is 7 to 18 per 100,000 
and the prevalence is the proportion of the population found to have a disease, or in this case, a rupture. The Achilles tendon affects competitive and recreational athletes, as well as people who are not active. So the incidence of Achilles tendon rupture in the general population is 7 per 100,000, but over 80% of these ruptures occur during recreational sports, and approximately 10% of patients who sustain an Achilles tendon rupture will have had pre-existing Achilles tendon problems. Um, incidences, as it says here, are increasing due to women becoming more sporty, and the incidence is the frequency something occurs. So, for example, if people talk about increased frequency of MS or cancer or other diseases. As you can see, the age and gender distribution, it's a higher proportion of sort of 30 to 39 year olds in um, men and women. It's slightly older um, and slightly older age group. But the main risk factor really is that 30 to 50 year old age group. So this slide is taken from a study, which is an American study. So you can see sort of non-sports related injuries is 32%, but within that sports related injuries, basketball seems to be the main one. This will of course differ from country to country, and as it's an American study, it's why basketball is so high. Um, but you tend to find in different countries, you have different sort of um, related sort of sports. So in New Zealand, netball and rugby will be very high. And in the UK, football or soccer itself is a much higher proportion. So you can have different language when you describe inflammation of a tendon. And um, tendonitis, ten tenosinovitis and tendinosis tend to be umbrella terms which come under the umbrella term of tendinopathy which um, just refers to the disease of the tendon and the other medical terms as said before are part of the umbrella term which makes this up. So tendinitis tends to be an inflammation of the Achilles tendon itself um, and it, the inflammation is typically short-lived um, but over time, if not resolved, the condition may progress to a degeneration of the um, tendon, which is known as tendinosis. Um, so that's usually from chronic overuse and represents disarray at a cellular level um, when the collagen is imperfectly lined up. And tenosynovitis is the inflammation of the tendon sheath. Um, and this can produce pain, swelling, and sometimes a bit of a crepitus or creaking on movement. So that can most commonly occur as part of a bacterial infection or part of a rheumatological or autoimmune disease. The risk factors and presentation. So risk factors is that 30 to 50 year old age group and increased training. Um, but interestingly enough, there was a recent study done where they found that if people were going to have Achilles tendon problems or tendinopathy, actually, if you were a runner, um, incre um, running more increased distances would actually help you in your rehabilitation from the disease if it came along. Um, and if you return to training after a long period of inactivity, that can predispose you to more Achilles tendon problems as well. Um, Apart from this, increasing your running distance by more than 10% predisposes you to a variety of injuries, but that includes um, Achilles tendinopathy. Um, other risk factors can in include steroid injections, um, diabetes, sort of those systemic inflammatory conditions, as well as rheumatoid arthritis and gout. So um, typically in a young um, individual, the Achilles tendon ruptures in the critical zone, which is a region of relative um, hypervascularity, which is two to six centimetres proximal to the insertion. Um, presentation wise, it'll be a gradual onset of pain and stiffness over the tendon. We're talking about tendinopathy here, which may improve with heat or walking and worsen with strenuous activity. Tenderness of the tendon on palpation, there may be also be crepitus and swelling and pain on active movement of the ankle joint. And increasingly we're finding sort of um, 
the weekend warrior, which is um, a sort of typically your person in a sedentary job. And um, the weekend warrior is someone who'll take part in runs or things like tough mudders on the weekend. So a mechanism would be suddenly pushing off from a weight bearing forefoot, usually with the knee in extension or an unexpected and violent dorsiflexion of a plantar flexed foot. And as mentioned before, this is very common in racket sports, um, basketball and football in particular. The link from this video is um, a YouTube video of David Beckham's Achilles injury while he was playing for AC Milan. Um, and as you can see, it's a very innocuous injury and it's really just from turning and pushing off. So it's a good one to have a look at. Symptoms really can be um, of a sort of um, a partial rupture or a rupture would be a very flat footed gait. Um, and you can walk and wait there usually, but you can't push off the ground properly on the side where the tendon is ruptured. Um, it's an inability to stand on your tiptoes. And if the tendon is completely torn, you may feel a gap just above the back of the heel. Um, however, if there's bruising and swelling, this can disguise the gap. Diagnosis is usually by a physio or a GP examination, which includes observation, palpation, and the Thomas or Simmons test. Investigations can include ultrasound or MRI. So the American Academy of Orthopaedic Surgeons in 2009 recommended a diagnosis be made from two of the following points, which was a Thompson or Simmons squeeze test, decreased anteplantar flexion strength, the presence of a palpable gap, and increased ankle dorsiflexion with facilitation. This may be missed in 25% of the cases and can often be misdiagnosed as a tendinosis or an ankle sprain. Um, and it's often, um, investigations are often done to diagnose and rule out other pathology. Through an operation, so op operative versus non-operative treatment. So with non-operative treatment, that would include functional bracing or casting, and the indications would usually be acute injuries with surgeon or patient preference for non-operative management, if this is an option, or a sedentary patient or medically frail patients. Um, you can have a decreased re-rupture rate with non-operative management, but there are recent studies which um, say this doesn't seem to sort of matter between operative or non-operative um, management. Um, and obviously with non-operative, there's fewer wound complications compared to operative treatment. With operative management, it tends to be an end-to-end -end Achilles repair, and this would be in acute ruptures, sort of less than three months typically. More than three months, it would be depending on the investigation and the length of the gap between the ruptured parts of the Achilles tendon. So um, the approach would be to make an incision just medial to the Achilles tendon, usually to avoid the serial nerve. Um, but as you can see from this slide, there are YouTube clips you can clip on. Um, if the link doesn't work, then you can always just search in the YouTube search bar for Achilles tendon operations. And there should be plenty of operations for um, uh, it to watch. The typical transfer is from the flexor, sorry, flexor hallucis longus transfer. And that would be um, indicated in chronic ruptures with a defect more than three centimeters rather than pulling the um, ruptured bits together again. So typically post-operatively, you would um, be placed in a, um, a boot which has a 10 to 20 degree plant flexion, and this would protect the um, repair and um, um, protect the um, scarring from the operation as well. With an MRI, the indications would be to um, have an equivocal sort of um, uh, diagnosis and also on equivocal physical exam findings and also with chronic ruptures. As you can see from this MRI, the rupture is quite um, sort of high signal and um, obvious on, um, on the picture. With an ultrasound, um, indications for this type of investigation would um, usually be to determine between a sort of complete versus a par partial rupture. 
So with the research, it tends to disagree on um, whether the rates of sort of re-rupture are higher between operative versus non-operative management. Um, but in some studies, they've shown that the incident can be sort of 10 to 40 percent higher um, in operative management versus non-operative management. However, um, some other studies have shown no difference in re-rupture rate. Um, wound healing complications, the incidence tends to be between 5 and 10% in operative management and the risk factors for this would include smoking, which is the most common risk factor, being a female gender and steroid use. Um, Treatment would be um, for a deep infection would be the debridement of necrotic or infected um, tissue and cultural specific antibiotics for six weeks. Um, and the other post-operative complication can include cerebral nerve injuries. Um, and the incidence is higher where a sort of pericutaneous approach is used around the tendon. Any questions? Well, there won't be because it's a YouTube presentation, um, but obviously you can type in the comments if you have any questions. And these were the references I used at the time for this presentation. So I hope you enjoyed the Achilles tendon presentation and feel free to use it if you want to for other purposes. Thank you.